Welcome to Take 10. The words and thoughts of C.H. Spurgeon tell a story of the life of Joseph as defined by the last words of his father, Jacob. And it is in this setting that many years ago, I began to be comforted by the life of Jacob. Jacob had the strength and the power to follow God through every matter that came his way. But no task was so daunting as to watch his own sons prepare to take their destiny. And that's why that I have come to you today on this Take 10 Sessions, and I'm going to be here for a while in this area, Surviving Dream Killers. Now, there's a great gulf between having an idea and bringing that idea into productive authority. Many of you come to us in the independent Christian churches, looking for legal covering, looking for someone to help you bring things that you know are in your heart, that God has placed there, and bring that idea into a productive authority. Many people have things in production, but it can never live beyond them. It can never move into the second or the third generation. It has a problem because people in the second generation see you up close. They see things that you have done and they don't want to do them that way. But nevertheless, you have the perch. You're sitting watching, and there is a tremendous gulf between having that idea, dreaming that dream, having that vision, and then bringing that idea into a productive authority. Throughout my life, I have been a dreamer. Throughout my life, others have been able to see that I'm a dreamer. Often I would hear nice words to offset the awkward realities of the things I would say and do. Even as a child and later as a young man, it showed itself as I began to preach at an early age. Visions are many times born in the eyes in which revelatory knowledge comes to bring an insight. These insights are not always welcome, and they tend to attract dream killers. Having no schooling in the battlefield of the mind or the battlefield between the supernatural and the natural, I would find myself discouraged. Now those who dreamed and protected vision were viewed as those who would take another path from the norm. The dream killers and the sentinels who watched out for those who might stray from those norms, forgot that one day they too had visions and were allowed to progress. But surrounding themselves with those who think like themselves caused their future dreams and their future visions to be produced from a spirit of familiarity. It never occurred to those who became dream killers that they were operating from a familiar spirit. They felt to the dreams and the visions which were being proposed was to protect the tried and the true paths. Now, it's not my desire to spend the next few days with you focusing on dream killers. It is my desire to open your eyes to the war and the craft that is used in that war to destroy your dreams and in your visions. Now, to get something into a place to where it can go forward is always a problem. To bring forth that which is in your mind, your eyes, your dreams, even if you wake up at night, the, the wonderful founder of Kids Against Hunger dreamed the entire formula of the billions of meals now that have went out from those of us that have used that Kids Against Hunger meals throughout the earth and all the subsidiaries that float out from underneath him. And he had a, a dream, and it, he wrote down, as a food scientist, he wrote down all the formula that he would do to feed millions, and for the next uh, 40, 50 years, he was able to bring that idea into production. And all the naysayers came, and the killers came, and did they ever throw him into a pit and put him into a place that he could not even get out of? And in his later life, when he was transferring the wisdom and the knowledge of his, of his dream over to the next generation of those who would develop it even further. He fell into great disarray with those he was trying to press it into because 
They could not see a man with a dream and a vision having a right dream and a right vision for a future. He had never fell among the dream killers where they killed him. He stayed alive in his vision. And even until this day, the strength of what he produced is going forward. We want you to succeed here at Independent Christian Churches International. We're not about the conference. We're not about dragging you into a, a boardroom somewhere and giving you the things that we want you to do or sending you a book or lining you out with a play package or showing you where you must go. We are into taking what you bring to us, the ideas, the visions, the dreams, and helping you to legally take care of that, make sure it's perfect and works well and it's never brought into disarray. Uh, number two, to where you actually have, can do it in a productive manner and bring forth the things that you need. But in the spiritual world that we live in, you must realize that what you are trying to do is an affront to the enemy. See, often we in the Christian life feel the onslaught of the attack, but we do not know who it was or what has shot and wounded us. But it's my assignment to strengthen you by exploring once again the arrows which wounded Joseph. You see, I believe that Joseph was a type of Christ, like most theologians and most uh, those that minister the gospel believe. I believe that Jacob was a type of the father, looking over the future, looking for the redeeming qualities of his sons to bring forth that. I believe we are all meant to be Josephs, one who God can lay his hands on and strengthen their arms so that they can do those things that they were called to do to be strengthened, to heal and grow in God's grace. The power of what we're discussing is far more than anything you can dream of. I know because I have walked through this step by step. You see, Jesus Christ was, I believe, the original Joseph. And he came to this world to reconcile the world unto himself. And I believe that that was the Father's intention, that he would be brought through the battle. I believe the overall picture of where you are right now and where you are going is what we must make happen in the next few seconds so that you can take hold and root. You may be sitting there having started well, having got everything into place, and then all of a sudden you find yourself stampeded. Why do you think that is? Once the idea of God that he has put in your heart comes to surface, then all the sentinels of the devil all of those who try to fight with religiosity perform the circumstances that they can to throw you into a well where you can't see, where you can't feel, where you can't understand anything that you are doing. I think about these boys in Thailand. I'm, I'm living in a time, maybe you're years later looking at this, but right now, currently in our history, the Thai boys have just been brought out of a cave by a massive international effort they went two and a half miles deep into a cave just to become a team, touch the back of the cave and come back out. But something happened. The floodwaters came in and caught them. I'm talking to dreamers right now. I want you to survive the dream killers in your life. Those things that come from supernatural and those things that come from natural so that you can find your purpose in life and stay ahead and bring your idea into productivity and power and authority. Bring it into productive authority. God bless you. I'll see you next time on Take 10.